When I was starting out in Flutter, a scenario that always gave me trouble was juggling my layout when the device's keyboard was visible, which, unless I was careful, would obscure half of my app's UI. A common situation might involve me filling the whole screen with a stack, giving a hero image the top 50%, a text input the bottom 10%, and maybe a scrollable list of comments that remaining 40%. Stacks are powerful, so before long, my UI would be looking good, and I'd be excited to start testing it out. I'd tap on that text input, and suddenly the keyboard appears and covers half the screen, including the very text input it's supposed to power. This is not what I wanted. If you've been around the Flutter block a few times, you've probably seen a device's virtual keyboard cover half of your UI. Understanding everything at play requires getting cozy with the Media Query class. So let's do it. First of all, just like many classes in Flutter, the value you get back from media query dot of context is actually a media query data object. This is similar to how theme dot of context returns a theme data object. And within that media query data class, which is flush with useful information, are three attributes of particular interest for our quest. They are view insets, padding, and view padding. These variables are well-named and easy to keep straight. Just kidding, they're impossible to keep straight, which is why we're talking about them. The first line of documentation for view insets says, the parts of the display that are completely obscured by system UI, typically by the device's keyboard. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. In my head, I distinguish this from the other two by thinking about how you have to press keys in to type. View insets is for the keyboard. For padding, the documentation says, the parts of the display that are partially obscured by system UI, typically by the hardware display notches or the system status bar. Okay. And lastly, the documentation for view padding says, the parts of the display that are partially obscured by system UI, typically by the hardware display notches or the system status bar. Which sounds familiar. So what's the difference between padding and view padding? Well, not much, unless the device's keyboard is showing. Then things get interesting. You see, padding references screen pixels that the operating system is holding on to for its own devious purposes. An example is the bottom of an iOS device, which reserves a small area to detect swipes that raise the system tray. But what happens to those pixels when the keyboard is up? They're no longer reserved for this purpose. They're doing keyboard things now. And so when the keyboard is raised, the value for padding.bottom is consumed by view insets.bottom and drops to zero. This makes sense, but if you've used padding.bottom to position things within a stack, then the keyboard's arrival will shift your UI down several pixels toward the keyboard. Also, not what you want. So, What's a developer to do if they want consistent positioning, regardless of what shenanigans the keyboard is getting up to? That's view padding. The difference between padding and view padding is that if a keyboard comes along and tramples all over the edge of your device, view padding remembers what was. And what about safe areas, you might be wondering? Well, if you wrap everything in a safe area, then most of these numbers stay pinned to zero. That's the job of the safe area, after all. Except view padding.bottom and view insets.bottom, only when the keyboard is showing. To review, view insets represents areas fully obscured by the system, basically the keyboard. Padding represents areas partially obscured by the system, basically notches. And what about when a keyboard consumes the space behind a notch? Padding drops to zero, but view padding maintains its value. If you found any of this hard to remember, you're in good company. At least, if you consider me good company. While preparing for this video, I had to re-look up the difference between the three attributes at least 10 times, which is why I made the dart pad linked below. Check out that to see it all happening live right before your very eyes. And whenever you forget which one is which, pop back over to that dart pad. For more info on Flutter, head to flutter.dev.